Namo Adidafa. Good morning. Thank you for joining me for our daily practice check-in. Listen, listen, listen. This beautiful sound calls us back to our true home. The fifth mindfulness training, aware of the suffering caused by unmindful consumption, I vow to cultivate good health, both physical and mental, for myself, my family, and my society by practicing mindful eating, drinking, and consuming. I will ingest only items that preserve peace, well-being, and joy in my body, in my consciousness, and in the collective body and consciousness of my family and society. I'm determined not to use alcohol or any other items that contain toxins, such as certain TV programs, magazines, books, films, and conversations. I'm aware that to damage my body or my consciousness with these poisons is to betray my ancestors, my parents, my society, and future generations. I will work to transform violence, fear, anger, and confusion in myself and in society by practicing a diet for myself and for society. I understand that a proper diet is crucial for self-transformation and the transformation of society. Our Dharma lesson this morning is on Dukkha by Ajahn Sundar from her book Pachupana, The Present Moment. Dukkha is someti also sometimes translated as difficult to bear. We meet this difficulty in our meditation practice. At some point in meditation, maybe often, maybe not so often, we may sense something difficult to bear and that we've got to move the body or the mind to change something. If we pay attention to this moment, we might be able to realize the end of that desire to move, that moment which is difficult to bear in a small or deep way. If we find that our mind feels dull, there are many ways of working with this. We can bring attention back to the body sitting. We can investigate this quality of dullness as an object of observation. What does dull dullness feel like? we begin to see that it has a quality of vibration. It is changing all the time. It is not just one uniform mass. We can feel it in both the physical and the mental body. We can double check that moment when our mind says, I've got to move or something has to change. We try to stay with it. And if we do that, we may actually realize the ending of that pressurizing mind. Begin to know that the mind can sometimes feel like a pressurizing force. Sometimes we think that pressure only comes from our outer life, but actually it comes from within, from the way we react to the outer life. When we take refuge in the Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha, we stop wanting life to be perfect and turn inwards to see whether our responses to life are just reactive habits, often tinted by anger, aversion, frustration, impatience, and so on. As we establish our mind in the refuge of awareness, we can see something much lighter about what goes on in the mind. We keep reestablishing this refuge of mindfulness, awareness, whatever happens in this reflective mirror-like space. Notice the arising and the ending. Notice the space between, the time when nothing has arisen when no mind objects are present, when nothing is reflected. Notice the moments when there is the feeling the mind is just resting.
May all beings be well. May all beings be happy. May all beings be peaceful. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you for joining me today.